Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Roma Football Manager 2019. I'm Aitor and today I'm going to try to talk a little bit lower than I normally do. Trying to get the volume of my voice to really almost mute because I'm recording this a Friday evening, basically at midnight. And uh, I don't think my neighbors would be too happy if, uh, I'm not sure they could be out doing something else, but if they have went to bed, probably won't be too happy because I'm recording this basically like wall to wall through where they are sleeping. So yeah, I need to try to contain myself and speak really low. But right now we are looking at our U18 team. And the reason that we are do that, doing that is that the youth intake have happened and we actually got two interesting youngsters. We got uh, DeSantis here, look at him. Maybe if I saw potential. Some pretty decent stats for uh, his age. And we also got 15-year-old Rollo here. Another one with a uh, potential five stars here. So yeah, some, some interesting some youngsters. Study talent is here. Sokko and Navas joined us last season as three transfers. Uh, not three transfers, as uh, regions. And Holm we signed, I believe, a season ago. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how these kids develop for the future. Today we have a huge day coming up because it is the second leg of the Champions League first knockout round versus uh, Valencia. But since we played that, that first leg, we have played quite a few games. So uh, we managed to beat, uh, beat Cotrone. And then we had this second leg in the in the Italian Cup semi-final. And since we had that five goals against non-win, I was very, very secure for this game. So considering the tough schedule, few days rest between these games, and also we have had quite a few injuries. I basically, I think I started two or three of my U18 players in this game and I had like two more on the bench that came on later on. So lost it one goal against one, but it was more or less uh, according to plan. So I'm completely fine with it. And then we managed to beat Bologna and then finally a big win at home versus Torino. And that actually brings us, look at this. Our safety margin is kind of back. Because while we have been playing pretty well, uh, pay, taking wins, Sassuolo haven't been doing as well. It kind of probably was uh, was uh, expected because like most of the teams we've been playing recently have been teams, or basically all of them, from, from the lower part of the, of the league table. So we have more or less only been playing teams that we should be beating. But, but it's been a very tough schedule with, with both the Italian Cup, both legs, the Champions League, both legs, and the league. So a very tough schedule. And uh, we have had quite a few injuries. Let's take a look at, I think most of the worst ones is gone now. Pellegrini is suspended. But you can tell basically every player here that's a jello fight, fighting with fitness is like players that just come back from, from an injury, like El Sharaway. Uh, actually, I think even Clover, but it was, uh, he's back in business completely now. Uh, Umda still injured and Sos is still injured. Fazio has just came back from his injury. You know, he had like a two and a half, three month injury and uh, he haven't played since he's come back. Schick, just back from injury, haven't pl played since his injury. So, yeah, it's been a struggle. As you can tell, I like, quite one, two, three. And I think I just demoted one, two more youth players that have been used for, for rotation with, uh, with this tough schedule combined with all of the injuries. But yeah, this is the Valencia team we're up against, and this is such an important game. If we don't do well now, our Champions League dream will end. And you all remember last season, we managed to beat Valencia at home with two goals against none. If we can just do that once again, everything will be fine and everything will be great. But I mean, this is such a difficult one. Of course, we're going to talk about wanting a bench, but... Yes, such a difficult game, but hopefully that at home advantage can be exactly what we need to basically tip things to our advantage. Because we desperately it would be devastating if the Champions League dream ended here. We we yeah we desperately want a good result. We uh, we want to get at least as far as we did last season, and of course it would be a dream if we can uh, can go even further. Um, and of course, you know the result from the away game. We lost two. Oh, of course, the first highlight is for Valencia. This could be terrible news for us. 
Um, but maybe we can turn it around. Here is Arp. Arp breaks through all by himself into the box. And uh, this is, oh my god, this is a dream goal. It's Arp's 27th goal of the season. And look at this masterpiece. More or less all by himself. Yeah, it was a good pass. It definitely was. But all by himself, he gets through two defenders. And he scores exactly the start we wanted. And yeah, you know the result. We, we lost with three goals against two. So we have two away goals. Hopefully that could be to our advantage. Because those away goals could, could really decide things. I mean, if we win with two goals against one, for example, we are going through on uh, on away goals. But we need to win it because they win. Uh, they win, did win. And <laughs> look at that, Garrison, his eighth goal of the season. But still remember, I mean, last episode when we played them uh, away, we we were two goals up, and then things went down the drain. So we we can't start slacking now. Think it's all done. As I tell you, something's happening ASAP for the kickoff. This could be terrible news for us. Focus, lads. Focus. Cristiante with a weak pass. And look at this. They are breaking through. That's exactly what I've warned you about, lads. Exactly. We scored. The lads starting relaxing, thinking it's all done. And then, of course, things like this happens. Show some passion, guys. Show some passion. So right now, that uh, those away goals is basically saving us. And we've seen so many replays now. I think we are done with that. But yeah, we, we've seen so much here. Focus, focus, focus. Here is Santon. Santon on the right flank. Into a box with an early cross, but it's cleared. Nali wins it back. Gerson. Nali. No, it's Cristiante for Arp, 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 Arp. Oh. Well, we are creating chances. We are, we are creating chances. That's good, but... Oh my god, I'm so nervous right now. I'm, I'm, I'm sweating here in front of the computer. Kind of embarrassing, but... Pastore! That was a great chance! We really would have needed something special from you there. But uh, clearly, and look at that, Cristiante with a 6.0 rating. What's up with that? And he already have a yellow card. If he's performing that bad, I'm fearing him going to do something stupid and pick up a, a, a red card. But here's El Sharaway. And another great shot. So actually, I'm going to pause it already here and tell Cristiante to ease off tackles. Because, I mean, if he's having a terrible game, 6.0 rating, I'm just waiting for him to just make a silly mistake and foul somebody and get his second yellow card. Even considering maybe subbing him during half time, because uh, that's that. Yeah, terrible is basically the only way to, to describe it. That's the half. No, it's not the half time whistle. It's an offside on Tonali. I'm so nervous. Come on, lads. We need this. We need this desperately for our fans, for ourselves, for our family, for everybody that supports Roma, guys. We need it. But we can't be pleased. Yes, we have two guys that have been guards. We have one guy who's been decent. And look at all this trash. So we tell we need to tell them that we're not happy. We have higher expectations for the second half. That was a question. Do we want to sub Cristiano already? I mean, he looks motivated. And he has actually climbed from 6.0 to so 6.3. He's moving in the right direction. I'm going to give him uh, a few minutes here in the second half. But if nothing changes, I'm probably going to make an early sub, like in the 55, 60 minutes or something like that. Here is Valencia with the possession once again attacking on the left flank. Breaking through a Marcano intercept it. Very important. Going for Arp. Arp needs some backup though, guys. That backup gap backup is going to Gar Garrison and it's El Sharaway and he scores. He scores. He scores. He scores. El Sharaway and this could be it. But I mean, at the same time, they just need one lousy goal. And basically going to be a mirror result because then we are winning 3-2 and they won last game with 3-2 and that means a draw. So I'm happy for that goal, but still they only need one goal to bounce back. But here's Marcon with a free kick, Garrison, Pastore, Cristiante going for Moreno on the left flank. A lot of plays in the box. Can you find somebody who goes back to Cristiante? Ah, well, decent try. I think it uh, the top of uh, the bar there. Let's see, Cristiano's actually climbed to 6'6", six, six, but then as I say that he goes on to 6'4". 6'6", um, six, six once again. I think we're going to go with the early sub here with Cristiano because uh, he's basically... We, we need something more. We need something better here. We need something extra, something special. 
and maybe that could be Pereira. He's really good at uh, at free kicks and also pretty decent at penalties, so maybe he can set something up. They are trying to play. Actually, why do I have double match stats here? Probably me going back looking at um, at the previous uh, games and so on. So one sub. Do we go with somebody? I mean, we could go with Moreno. Jello card and nervous, but uh, we don't have Colro on the bench. I'm not sure if that would be a great option. But it could be. Let Let's play it safe here. Remove a nervous guy with a Jello card. It's uh, it's not completely wrong. It's not uh, maybe the greatest options, but not a bad one either. Even though if I would I would have prepared to have Colro on the bench. Now we are under pressure by Valencia once again. Guys, you have th three, four guys against two. You could win this one back. You can intervene. You can tackle. You can turn it around. Or you can just stand there, watch them passing it around. And I'm not amused. I'm not amused. And there's so many Valencia players into the box. This is so important. Beautiful day by Gerson. Gerson managed to clear it for off. Such an important interception there by Gerson. And here's El Shara with an early cross for Arp. And that could have been a really nice volley, but I think the most important thing here is Gerson's interception, because that could have been extremely dangerous if uh, if uh, the Valencia player would have managed to get it into the box, because they had so many players uh, showing up there. So we have one last sub, but we need to make it count. So, um, and, and Sosa is injured, that's why he's not on the bench. We kind of don't have any good options for Tonali. Now Sosa is playing great, so maybe we should keep him on. And Gerson has been brilliant. I guess we... Ah, this is difficult. What do we do here? Kind of don't see any... Um... I don't... Actually, I think I'm going to keep it like this for now, because... All the players that would be options to sub are players that are playing so well. I mean, they are getting tired. Could be worth subbing in them just for that but I feel like we're going to keep it like this a little bit longer I mean if this guy is going to go into extra time could be nice to have some fresh legs but here is Arp and that should be the winner Arp's 28th goal this season the assist from El Sharaway and yeah that should mean that the Champions League dream is very much uh, alive maybe I shouldn't get cocky yet but they need to score two goals in five minutes and some extra time to turn this around oh what a perfect finish there by Arp what a goal scoring machine this youngsters ha have been con basically already but with a huge margin paid back everything we paid for him we actually recently got like oh we are going to have to pay 10 mil because of a class soul from an assigned him that's uh, and that class soul was uh, we we're going to pay 10 mil if he pl uh, plays 50 games for us but of course if a player plays 50 games for you you most likely have show that he's worth those extra 10 million but look look at the domination here this is a complete and utter domination 27 shots to four 10 on targets to two I mean, completely destroyed them. I'm very, very pleased. A great result. The dream is alive. And we have so many interesting games coming up now. A lot of them. I mean, we have the final of the Italian Cup. We have the next round in the, in the Champions League. And we have most less since I've been playing so many teams from the lower parts of the table. We have a lot of games left uh, against the top teams. So... Yeah, I'm going to have a very exciting uh, couple of episodes coming up in the near future. And maybe, just maybe, I mean, it would be fantastic. We shouldn't get there early, but it would be great if we could could uh, come even further than we did uh, last season in Champions League. But yeah, that's probably might be too much for, uh, to ask for. But that's it for this episode. As always, thank you so much for sharing your time with me. And I'll see you in the next one.